there's been a whole bunch of tweaks to the way that the masks are handled in Darktable 4.4. So let's dive in and have a look. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 133 of Understanding Darktable. As you can probably hear, and you can probably see, I've got a little bit of acoustic treatment in this room now. Not all of it, there's still more to come, uh, but I can certainly hear an improvement already. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. So, there's been a whole bunch of tweaks added to the way that masks are handled in Darktable 4.4. But before we get onto that, there's one other feature that uh, it's just a one paragrapher in the release notes that I think is worthy of addressing. And it is a global right click and drag operation has been added to allow image rotation to be corrected without first having to open the rotate and perspective module. I love this. I absolutely love this because it made no sense to me that you had to go and find the rotate and perspective module. So just to demonstrate, let's find an image. It doesn't really matter which. I'll just pick a random image from my trip to Alaska. Here we go. So without having to open any module, without having to search for rotate and perspective, you can simply right click and drag and you can now instigate a rotation to your image just like so. If I want to correct that, I can just simply go vertical in line with those trees and that will set me back to pretty much where I was to begin with. So that's just a very quick aside to the main content of this video, which is all about what's happened to masks. So let's dive in and look at the release notes. The first item on the list, the brush smoothing and pen pressure options have been moved from the global preferences dialog to a new collapsible properties section in the mask manager so that they can be changed while drawing and can be assigned shortcuts. Okay, so what that means is if we jump over to this image here, just some fall foliage that I shot whilst on my trip. Uh, you can see here that within the color balance RGB module, I have a mask. We can tell that because of the icon over here on the right hand side. And that mask is a drawn mask. And if we have a look at said mask, there's the path. Let's turn on the mask overlay. We can see that that is the overlay for the mask. And if we go to the path, which is brush number one from the color balance RGB module, we can see we've got this properties module at the bottom or this properties panel at the bottom of the module. And all of the things that you would normally use shift mouse wheel, control mouse wheel, etc., to control, you can now control from here. So if you wanna control the hardness, you can do it like so. And what's really nice about this feature is that by having the mask overlay turned on, you can actually see how that hardness and how the size really affect the mask that you are trying to draw. So I really like that. I hadn't actually considered just how much of an advantage this new properties panel was prior to starting recording tonight. It was only as I started playing with it, I went, oh, that's actually a really nice feature because it means you can turn on the mask overlay and you can actually see exactly, you know, where there are these little portions of the mask that aren't quite 100%. So you might want to increase either the hardness or increase the size so that those parts of the mask get completely filled in. So that's quite a nice little addition. Next up, the drawn mask shape, size, feather, and hardness sliders in the mask manager, which we were just looking at, now use a look, 
now use? Well, they didn't exist previously. So anyway, now use a logarithmic scale and scrolling over them makes relative adjustments just like shift and scroll over the shape itself. As with other sliders, control or shift can be used to make fine or coarse adjustments, similarly with shortcut fallbacks enabled. Shortcuts assigned to the sliders can be used to adjust brush size or hardness while drawing. So what that means is if we go to the brush stroke and we open up the properties panel, we can use a keyboard modifier like shift and the control wheel to adjust these parameters exactly like clicking the slider and dragging but just using your mouse wheel and a keyboard modifier like shift or control shift will allow you to do normal adjustments and control will allow you to do fine adjustments all right moving on i do love this next one a fifth set operator has been added to the mask manager to allow drawn shapes to be combined in some mode, meaning the addition thereof. This allows repeated brush strokes with low opacity to be layered on top of each other to increase the strength of the mask. This mode is now the default for brush shapes. I cannot tell you people how excited I was when I read this. This is freaking epic. I've been wanting this in Darktable for years, and I'm sure other people have been waiting for it as well. Let's explore what exactly this means. So we want to do something with brush strokes. Now, as you have seen, I already had a mask drawn in this color balance RGB module. I've just deleted that path because what I want to show you now is that we can go to a drawn mask and we are going to use the brush stroke, but burn this into your memory cells, people. Whenever you are going to use a brush stroke from now on, you do not want to simply left click on the brush. What you want from this day forward is to control click because what that will do is allow you to draw multiple brush strokes without having to re-enable the tool every time. And you want to set the opacity to its lowest value, which sadly is only 5%. I would love it if I could go down to 1%, but the minimum opacity value that you can use is 5%. So your default should always be control click on that brush icon, because that will mean that you are gonna do multiple brush strokes. In terms of my brush size, I can use my mouse wheel to get the size that I want, or I can use the sliders down here. I'm happy with something around about there. In terms of the feather, which is also the hardness, I can use the hardness slider, or I can use shift and mouse wheel to set my feather to the size that I want. And once I've done that, I can now start drawing. Now, admittedly, I am using a Wacom tablet and a stylus, but that is not essential. You can do this with a mouse. So now I can simply come in here and start doing this. And I can start doing brushes and look at my, look at my mask manager. It's just adding all of these brush strokes with low opacity. Oh, what happened? Did I kill it? Did I overload it? Oh. For some reason, it just dropped out of doing the brush strokes. I don't know what happened there. Okay, control click on the brush and we'll just keep going. Okay, let's just keep on going here and let's see what happened. Oh, it did it again. Ooh, have I found another bug? I honestly don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. We'll control click. 
and we're going to come over here and we're going to keep on drawing brush strokes. Oh, and it's done it again. So it is still adding new brush strokes, but for some reason it keeps on kicking me out of the, the tool. That's really bizarre. I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, we'll just, just keep going until it breaks, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> done it again. Okay, doesn't matter. You get the idea. And if we now turn on the mask overlay, we can see that that is the mask that I've built up with, what is it? 87 brush strokes. Now, I'm not sure what's going on with the tool just kicking me out every now and again. I don't know if that's a, a glitch or if I'm accidentally bumping something with my stylus. I don't know. Don't know what's going on there. But the idea of being able to do multiple low opacity brush strokes. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. That should be your new default. If you are going to do any brush work, and when I say brush work, I mean using the brush shape within the drawn masks, this should absolutely be your default approach. Control click the brush so that you are in repeated brush stroke mode and set your opacity to 5% and then just layer up the brush strokes over and over again. Obviously, you need to keep an eye out for that. I don't know if that kicking you out of the brush stroke mode is just me or if it's a glitch. Uh, I honestly don't know. And it's possible that it's already been mentioned on Pixels and I just haven't, um, pixels.us that is, and I just haven't had time to keep up with the forum over there. So I, I don't know. But um, that new feature, wow, love it. All right. Let's move on. Oh, sorry, before we move on, I should have also shown you that if you then expand the group for the Color Balance RGB module, you will see this new icon, which is the union mode, or, or, or sorry, the intersection mode, which is now sum. I really wish they would bold the currently selected intersection mode so that you could see that, yes, this is in some mode or this particular brush stroke is in difference mode or intersection mode. Surely it can't be that hard to make the currently active interaction mode bold, you know, so that it stands out from the other four options in that list. Surely that can't be hard to do. But anyway, some is now the default interaction mode whenever you do a brush shape. So just remember that. All right, let's now move on in the list. Next up, it is now possible to change the set operator mode for all shapes in a group from the right click menu in the mask manager. So if we go back to that image we were just working on and we open up the group, which in this case we will do and select a handful of those brush strokes, we can now right click and change the mode for all of those selected brush strokes in one go. Beautiful. All right, moving on. Some actions in the mask manager menu previously could be activated even though they would have no impact on the image in some contexts. The move up and down actions are therefore now disabled for the first and last element in a group, respectively, and it is no longer possible to choose a set operator mode for the first element in a group, which makes sense because you need more than one path in a group for the set operators or the intersection modes to actually mean anything. So if you've only got one path, there is no sense in having a set operator mode. The sort order of the shapes in the mask manager groups has been reversed so that the lowest ranking shape is at the bottom of the group. The sort order of shapes outside of a group has also been changed for consistency. 
this is great because it used to be, if we go back into this image, that all of these brush strokes would actually start at one at the top and go to 87 at the bottom. And it was counterintuitive because you sort of really want the most recent brush stroke to be at the top of the list. So that's what that is now referring to. And that is the way it is inside the group and outside of the group. Now, the rest of what's in the release notes for 4.4 pertaining to masks is all about things that are bug fixes and, you know, modifications on previous behaviors. And to be honest, it's, it's a little bit arcane to try and cover it in a video. So I'm going to leave it there for the changes to masks. If you want to dive deeper, then certainly check out the release notes for 4.4. Of course, as I'm recording this, it is the 17th of December, which means 4.6 will drop in about four or yeah, four days time thereabouts, uh, which for me will be sort of Thursday, Friday, something like that. I'm not sure whether I'll get another chance this week to do another video. If I can, obviously I will, uh, but I'm just not sure how I'm going to go for time. Got a lot of family stuff to be doing in the week leading up to Christmas. So we'll see how we go. Anyway, that'll do for that. So acoustics, uh, yes, as previously uh, hinted at at the beginning of the video, I bought myself uh, a couple of boxes of those acoustic tiles I'll shoot some B-roll and cut it in here so that you can see what they look like. They're fairly standard ridge style diffusers. Uh, hopefully you can hear the difference. I certainly can. I notice it already. Once I sit down to actually start editing this video, I'll get a better idea of just how good or otherwise this sound is. So yeah. All right, anything else to discuss? Um, not really, other than I have yet to, I, I, I'm not gonna get to look at 4.5. Like I said, 4.6 will be out in four, five days time. And I've got a few things to do this week. So I'm probably not gonna get around to installing the dev version of 4.5. Uh, which means that when 4.6 comes out, as I said in the last video, I'll be reading the release notes at pretty much the same time as you are, and then giving myself a crash course in whatever those new things are, and then, you know, trying to create some content to bring everybody up to speed. In terms of my Alaska photos, I have finished processing all of the images that I'm happy with. Uh, I think I ended up with about 270 images that will find their way into a photo book. That's down the track. That'll be a January job, I suspect. Like I said, I may or may not get around to doing another video uh, this week. Probably not. So I will take this opportunity to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and a safe and happy new year. I hope you get to spend it with loved ones and I hope it's an enjoyable time for you. And to my patrons, once again, thank you for your continued support. All right, people, have a Merry Christmas, safe and happy new year, and uh, I will talk to you soon. Cheers.